Hola, buenas tardes. Voy a empezar. Ah, guapo, ten, ten, Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, pero I guess ya? all ¿Todo? you know ¿Sí? this panel will be in English. So I will start presenting our, our guests. Meanwhile, they are just uh, micro, our, our guests. Um, this is Carlos Tendra. I'm the marketing manager of Margin Technologies. Margin Technologies is a travel intelligence company. Uh, we're based in Spain and we work globally providing travel intelligence services to governments and, and private companies. But I'm here today not talk, to talk about Mavrian, but to talk about uh, one of the main challenges that our uh, travel and tourism sector is facing nowadays, which is the personalization and the segmentation of our targets, right? We all know that travelers really want to feel unique nowadays. We don't, we don't want to feel uh, as a tourist anymore, we want to feel a traveler and find something different, not not feeling like doing the same things that uh, traditionally uh, tourists do, right? And to talk about this, we have uh, different guests. Uh, first, uh, we have here uh, Diego Rodriguez, who's the co-founder and CEO of Passporter. Uh, Diego, if you want to present yourself, just taking profit of, of the this in class, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, a pleasure meeting with you guys, everyone. Uh, well, basically, we in Passporter, we have been working on filling a really clear mission. And we are trying to help users uh, plan, execute the trip, and to share the trip through a, one of the largest travel communities here in Europe. And basically, we have two business lines. We have <coughs> one side, a community, where those users uh, come to the community to use our technology and to create their itineraries for the future trips and to share all those experiences with all their friends and family. And on the other side, we have uh, different business lines from the B2B side where we work directly with international destinations where we try to help them uh, create high impact campaigns to attract tourism, to help them with our technology, to give the best visibility and show out the potential of the destination. And now we are working directly to try to close all the loop uh, with different tour operators, uh, travel agencies to help them create the best experience for the, for the clients. So, that's what we are trying to execute now in the short period of time. Thank you, Diego. Let me now introduce Jordi Cerdel. Jordi is the chief strategy manager uh, of Two Amusement. I guess all of you know know Two Amusement. So let me uh, give the word to, to Jordi to present a little himself and what they do at Two Amusement. So hopefully our two colleagues will come in to fill in these two places. I just came in here. Yeah just to give them the, the space at the center, but um, in um, to amusement, let me explain a little bit what we do. So let's imagine the following picture. We have on the left, the um, what we offer, what we sell, and there we have our product lines. We have three product categories. The first one is uh, experiences. Within that, this is the one day tours, The EAT, as we call it, the excursions, tickets, and activities. And within that, we include everything that has to do with Shorex, which is what we sell to the cruise industry. Then we have uh, transport, which is transfers, mainly transfers from and to the airport, um, and ports as well. And then we have multi-day tours. So we sell these um, three categories. Uh, with a mix of uh, products, which we call the own products, products that we design, we, uh, perch we, we uh, do the purchasing, we actually uh, do the production and the operation. But then we also sell what we have uh, with plenty of uh, suppliers, which are certified suppliers, so we have oh. this third party um, distribution. Then on the other side, we have the clients. And um, within the clients, uh, we have three areas as well, which we address. The first one is the TUI uh, clients. So we interact with them as millions of customers, of course. Um, uh, this is what we call the TUI ecosystem. Then we have our uh, B2B partners. Uh, a partner could be a travel agency, a tour operator, an OTA, a cruise line. And finally, our B2C um, uh, which we sell to, find to the final customer. In the middle is everything that we go through the transformation that we were commenting before, which is our platforms, a way to gather and get all of uh, our offer, everything that we sell or our products, 
and interact with the customer. And to finalize, we underpin everything under uh, it, what it is the quality and service standards uh, of uh, TUI with presence in more than uh, 40 countries with our local experts. So it's a complex, but you can summarize it in one single slide or picture. <laughs> Not bad. Thank you, thank you, Jordi. Uh, now let me introduce Daniel Martinez, who's the marketing manager of We Road. Please. Uh, thank you so much to, to come uh, on We Road and me to, to take place uh, with this talk. Uh, but first of all, uh, I think we are the news, so I want to take advantage and introduce what, uh, how it, uh, what is We Road and how it works. Uh, we are a um, community of millennial travelers who wants to discover the world at the same time that meet new people. This is uh, one of our main difference. And how it work? Um, we are um, our target is um, people between 25 and 49 years old who want to uh, travel in group. This group uh, need to be between 8 and 15 people and um, they, they are building by three pillars. The first one is segmented by age. We divide in, split in, in two groups, between 25 and 35 and 35 and 49 years old. The second pillar is the travel mood. We, we split in four different moods, um, adventure, um, relax and beach life, um, culture and cities, and nightlife. So it's like a, a mix. You can, uh, the majority of our users are solo travelers, so we use this uh, segmentation to do match. You do the match with your people with your age and in your mood. It's super easy to, to have fun in a group with this pre-segmentation. And the final but not the least point is all the, leads, all the groups uh, are led by a coordinator. This coordinator is not an official um, um, touristic operator, it's, it's like a travel buddy. It's people who work um, by their own and in their holidays uh, travel with us like uh, travel coordinators. Uh, this is like the main difference because uh, you, um, w uh, the travel buddy and the, the packs for the, for the group leave the experience in the same um, uh, adventure mood. Uh, if you are the first time in Petra, you need to leave the experience in the same level. Uh, so the, the travel buddy uh, usually is the first time that travel to the destination for the first time, like the pass. So the experience is in the same level, and it's one of the things that uh, lights a lot for the, for the customers. So more or less, this is good out in a uh, super short uh, sentence. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, last but not least, we have Andreas uh, Sirijos. I hope I, I, I <laughs> tell this well. And uh, he's the uh, regional senior director for Southern Europe and the Nordic countries, uh, Nordic countries of, of Sabre, how we say in Spanish, Saber yes. in, in, in English. Uh, uh, yeah, well, and, uh, and, and I'm sure you have a lot to to, to say about the topic of today, so please uh, go ahead, Andreas. So Saber is uh, one of the leading technology companies in travel. Um, we are having a marketplace where we connect suppliers, which can be airlines, hotel uh, chains, and uh, car rental companies on one side, and the other we have the buyers, which are uh, travel agents, online travel agents, offline travel agents, and of course the end traveler. And we sit right in the middle. Um, we are uh, the intersection between travel and technology. Now, we had undergone a, a huge project during the last three, four years to transform the company and uh, move to cloud. So we had partnered with Google on this. We have a 10-year agreement on that. And uh, the fact is that we have analyzed the trends and of course a lot of have changed during the last three years due to the pandemic and the economic situation. And uh, we have undergone a massive uh, transformation to move to a personalized marketplace for the travel industry and the travel ecosystem. So for us, uh, we contain a lot of data. <coughs> so whenever you travel on a, on a GTS like Sabre, we have all the data or you stay in a hotel, we have all the data. The important thing, what you do with the data. You have all this information that we need to mine. 
and understand in order to have a custom offer presented to you, the end traveler, and have a personalized service uh, for, uh, for the customer. And that's why we partner with Google, and that's the, the whole concept behind that. So um, for us, customization, personalization is the key enabler for the future. Thank you, thank you Andreas for the introduction. So, such a, in, an interesting panel when we have different approaches to the same challenge, right? So it's about personalization, back to the topic, personalization, uh, but we have two large international companies and two startups facing the same challenge, right? Uh, so I think this is, this is nice. To, to combine the, the analysis. Um, all of you are experts on uh, analyzing the tourism trends and, and preferences, right? Uh, you use a lot of information, some of you have a lot of in-house in information, uh, some of you use a lot uh, extra information, I mean, uh, in, in the contextual information, social networks <coughs> information, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, my, my first question would be regarding what, what have you discovered uh, lately regarding the, the trends. We know that the, the tourists, the, the travelers, are changing their preferences. Uh, not only because the pandemic, because new trends in habits of traveling, uh, more conscious traveling, uh, avoiding crowded places, etc., etc. So, uh, starting by you, um, Andreas, what you discovered uh, with your as you mentioned, you, you are leading this kind of uh, AI, Google AI information and, and, and tools in order to identify those trends um, with, with an, let's say, in a non-invasive way. What have you discovered lately? So uh, the last three years have been uh, an eye opener for us and for everyone in the industry because a lot of things have changed. And I'll start with the business travel first because now most of the employees can work from anywhere. And this is a huge disruption for the business. So the employer needs to work with the travel agency and the players in the uh, industry to accommodate that. So the, we need more flexibility and we need to inspire uh, the, the traveler, which a lot of times blur the lines between business travel and leisure, okay? At the same time, uh, we have a huge pressure on customer service because we have a lot of disruptions. For example, last summer we had a lot of cancellation of flights. Again, someone can, might, might get sick, might, uh, the plans might change, so it's important to offer this customer experience to them. They rely on the travel agency side and on us to be able to accommodate that in a very smooth fashion. Um, the other trend that is very interesting is that experiences are starting to be more important even than price. A lot of people have prioritized traveling and living this experience uh, against uh, other things. So in some cases, price is not anymore the driven um, factor. The driving factor is more about the experience. So we need to be able to create these experiences uh, for the end traveler. And finally, it's the best value for money. So um, both in leisure travel and in business travel, you need to justify uh, whatever offer you put on the table and uh, especially in business travel, the employee needs to convince the management to travel and spend the money because otherwise it could be a, a virtual meeting instead of a physical one. So all these requirements need to be uh, taken under consideration and that's why it's important to gather this data so you have proof points in order how to formulate your strategy around these trends. But it's important to analyze and understand these trends in order to have a strategy. And the data and the analysis of the data will be very important and a real challenge for all of us moving forward. Great, thank you. Uh, Daniel, let, let me ask you, uh, you are focusing on a much more specific segment. You, you told the, the millennium cell, that, that, that means b between 30 and 45, I'm, I'm right? Between 25 and 49. Okay. It's more okay. or less millennial. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's much more specific segment, uh, but uh, the type of traveler you are facing is, it's, as, you uh, as you told me, it's a social traveler, right? So it's, it's, it's willing to have an experience, but also at the same time to share this experience with, with meeting people, right? Uh, is there any finding on this, on, on this segment about trends for the next year, for the 23 and... Yeah, we, uh, we are increasing our numbers, uh, for example, tw uh, 2021 versus 2022, uh, multiplying by, by three. 
So the trend is super consistible uh, during our five years uh, from Italy lands for the first, very first time in 2017. For example, uh, in question of data, um, the company born because the generation are changing the way of travel. Uh, for example, uh, our main user is solo traveler. Why? Because uh, our studies, internet studies, say that more than the 60% of the population, millennial population or between 25 and 50 years, years old are not in an established relationship. So this concept changes a lot the, the way of travel. Because if you're in your, in your 30s, maybe a lot of your friends are getting married or having babies. So it's super difficult to match uh, the holidays to do um, a holiday with friends. But if you are in your 40s uh, and you broke your relationship from 20 years ago, it's very difficult to open new social relationships. Mm -hmm. So this model is a solution for this kind of user that want to travel, but uh, don't want with who uh, do the travel. Or maybe a small group of people that want to travel with more people because the, the question of uh, our road is of for sure the destination, but this relationship that they uh, built in, in our experience and during the before the experience and after the experience, because the community for us is super important. Or for example, uh, the terms of location, uh, for us is super important too. Uh, one of the things we, we uh, work like a tour operator, but for example, the flights are not included in our package. Why? Because uh, maybe you uh, live in London, but you want to do the wood road in Spanish. So we uh, build our experience in destination um, and finish in destination. Uh, you can go uh, from Madrid, from New York or from London uh, exactly with the, f the same price, uh, but you decide uh, from, from where and, and when. Because a lot of people, after do a wood road, uh, extend the experience in the destination because they have a super good relationship with some friends in the trip and extend three days more, for example. So we want to, flexi uh, to do uh, as flexible as we can this experience uh, arriving with the generation. Yeah, and, and it's, it's becoming a, a, a big market, a big segment. Uh, you told me that 65% uh, of millennials in Europe are not married. Is that is that correct? Or not in an established relationship? Oh, it's it's a lot. I mean, and and that that's something that uh, also matches with with your your target, probably Diego. Um, I mean, the solo travelers, right? Probably your target is, I guess, is is, is a younger profile, um, more connected and more seeking for adventure than than probably uh, the 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 profile or the segment that that um, Daniel is facing. Uh, do you have any any kind of trend, any finding? about this segment for the coming months or years? Yeah, well, basically, uh, we have been focusing on, on users that they want to create different experiences that they want to share with the rest of the community. You know? our, our perspective is that basically every person that executes a trip, if we give them the tools so that they can share all that experience, they're going to give an added value to other people that are traveling to that destination. So um, in a way, our community has been designed so that everything is really cycled and that those people that are creators, they can give that value to other users. We, we've seen that people nowadays, they are trying to execute experiences more kind of nature. They are trying to go away in a way from cities, massification. Um, after this COVID situation, people are trying to create experiences that are like a really big added value. We are seeing like really long distance uh, trips with all those different uh, people. They are taking long long trips uh, to Bali, to Indonesia, to different places. And the thing is that we are quite diversifying our target as we are now working with destinations that in a way are like lead generation tools for us to give an added value for them. We are working with tour operators, with travel agencies. So in a way, our, our target market is increasing quite a lot. And the thing is that from the B2C side, people, when they are trying to acquire information in order to make decisions on the destination they are willing to travel to or uh, deciding what's going to be the next step they're going to be taking uh, to execute that trip and to start with all the booking, we've seen that um, there's quite a big decentralization of the information. People, when they try to book a trip, they have to, in a way, they have to go into 10, 15 sources in mm -hmm. order to extract the right information in order to feel comfortable with that trip that they're going to be executing. So we have been working also in trying to centralize all that 
really important information that users need when they are going to be executing an, an itinerary. And we gather all that information from online, online sites that we consider that give an added value <coughs> for the user so that they can have everything in one same spot. Do you have even families using your services? I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's the thing is that at the end, at the end, as we try to help destinations to give visibility to, to the destinations, sometimes there are different strategies where all these different families they, we we acquire them with different strategies that we use to communicate those destinations and to give visibility. So in a way that we try to acquire those users, and as we are seeing, like there's a big trend on how people are are, are feeling less on a barrier on using tech products in order to have everything centralized. And we are also learning a lot on how people from the UX and the UE experience, how they are using our service as we are now trying to acquire users from other kind of less digital perspective, no? The, yep. Those people that book on a travel agency and everything that they are trying to have everything already done and they don't want to go and do everything tailor made for them. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I guess it's, it's more uh, we're moving from, from tourists to travelers, as I said uh, at the beginning, right? Uh, Jordi, back to you, uh, different level. Um, you have 20 million clients at TUI. Uh, you told me that 75% of that clients are using your, your app. That means a really large universe of data. So I'm sure you have a lot of trends that you can share with us regarding um, yeah, the tourism in, in the upcoming months. Yeah, first of all, I cannot reinforce enough uh, how much common ground we have in terms of what I heard from my, my colleagues here. Oh, actually, one point from Andreas in terms of the importance of the experience. Uh, this has, uh, we have been participating in a re recent study uh, that uh, now we have close to 50% or over 50% of the travelers, they check the experience first before they choose yeah. hotels or flights, which um, we have commented the same That's way. That's a lot, you said 50%. 50%, five zero. wow. Yeah, and and uh, more than 80% do the proper research, going back to y your point, Diego, about the information. From our side, uh, the key, so something that has really become an obsession, and I think that's probably uh, the area, uh, we can summarize in one key word, which is relevant. What is relevant for the client? We all have a lot of experiences. What is the experience that we need to put across the customer? And, and in here I have two examples that maybe I, I can share uh, to picture the, the, the key learnings that we had. When we interact with um, to a customer, we have privileged information. We have a lot of information about past purchases, about the demographics, about the type of clients, what they like. And uh, what you were mentioning about the TUI app, it's uh, a process to interact with the clients. We not only have 75% of our clients that actually download the app, but now we have uh, close to more than 70% that every any inquiries that we do, 70% of the inquiries are already being done through the app. Which is uh, the beauty about the system uh, is that you actually get in a better position to learn about the client for future requests. Uh, this has put us in a position to, in the last uh, year, to implement an uh, uh, artificial intelligence recommender, which is something that at the beginning it works, uh, but it gets better as we get more and more interaction with the clients. Uh, so today, we have a TUI customer that actually travels with us and uh, they buy water sports. The recommendation on the future traveling when they travel to another destination will be around that, that type. So, and that's something that um, it is where we uh, we know that we have the biggest learning curve ahead of us. is is the biggest challenge without a doubt. Th same thing, we need to be ready to find the recommended experiences for clients where we do not have the information. Uh, we don't have as much information. So when we go into our B2B partnerships, uh, we know that we will be getting requests, but out of the thousands of experiences that we have, the first thing that our systems identify is which partner does it come from. So the groundwork to ensure that out of those experiences, which ones are available, or so which ones are suggested for that particular partner, and we were having a conversation before that Yes, you start at a very high level. These these are for booking, or this is for carnival, uh, or this is for uh, easy jet. It doesn't matter. Then, 
slowly you get into more and more information and when finding the proper and the relevant uh, experience to offer, and it, it's a challenge that we all have, it's about how to use all this information without being in invasive uh, uh, to our customers. Yeah, that, that's that's key, absolutely. My, my next question was regarding that, the, the importance of, of technology and automation in, in, in all this process, I mean, to deal with such a huge, sorry, uh, such a huge amount of, of information, right? Uh, what's the role on of technology you were mentioning? Because you, you, you have to, to approach different segments, uh, both B2C, B2B, you have really different clients at, at the B2B side as well. So you need a really high level of flexibility on your uh, digital platforms, right? So, so can you tell us a little more about yeah. how, how you deal with that? So let me start uh, now uh, around this. Without technology, there is a number of things that we would not be doing. It would be absolutely impossible to even address. So let me give you the example of um, our multi-day tours platform, which is the area where you have a lot of strength and expertise. Uh, within TWI, we have um, more than 400 million euros worth of multi-day tours. And uh, a couple of years ago, we tasked ourselves on Let's digitalize as we have done with other categories. Um, but through the conversations with the clients and our partners, we realized that they were looking for flexibility. And our tours had everything but flexibility. This is the starting date, this is the, 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 the final date, and in between this is your itinerary. And we were quite successful in doing that. So we were tempted to do the digitalization process just to sell what we were successful at but this is, was not something that the clients want. Uh, so we challenged ourselves, and a couple of years ago, we started, uh, we partnered with um, Nethasa, which is a Swiss uh, startup in, um, in, um, in Switzerland. A Swiss startup is usually in Switzerland. Uh, and we actually started the development of uh, the combination of what we call our fixed tours with the flexibility that we have. And uh, right now, we have uh, not only what we have sold traditionally in there, but we also have what we call an inspirational tour. An inspirational tour is nothing else than uh, the recommendation. This is our recommended way to visit uh, with different options. And then the client can change absolutely everything on that trip. And what is really nice about this process is that the clients themselves are the ones who are guiding us on how that particular trip should look like. So going back to the point that you were making before, the information that we gather through the process of interaction through a platform, we shape the future of our own value proposition, which is something that in the traditional way, there was absolutely no way that we could uh, um, um, address uh, that point. It's interesting because, for example, um, we don't regret about technology for sure, but instead of a platform, you use, uh, we use, for example, WhatsApp. Yeah, uh, but before a, a before but that a, a platform. Trip, before uh, a, yeah, but uh, not not uh, automation yeah. uh, through a coordinator mm -hmm. in a WhatsApp group, for example. Agreed. And we uh, customize all the trip, depend of the um, of the people in the in the trip, but in a really human way. Exactly. It's super curious, like like the different point of the of the business uh, can go through technology or, or less technology. In in, in our view, to use. WhatsApp is a part of the digitalization, uh, digitalization mm -hmm, sure. process. So for me, that, that, that's all part of the technology. To back to your question. Yeah, yeah, I guess Daniel means that they still do a lot of things by hand. Oh he yeah. was yes. telling us before, right? It's like, look, uh, we, we still uh, have a need of personalization in terms of um, the, our, our customer service that have to be done by hand, which is amazing as well. I mean, it's another way of doing things. It's obviously another level. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's how how your business need to be done mm -hmm. so far. So yeah, that, that that's great. In the, in the case of of uh, Diego, you was telling me you are starting to use a lot uh, AI and and this kind of technology in order to know better your your targets. What are the sources you you work with in order to know better your potential clients? Yeah. Well, basically. At the end, we are a startup, so we we do not we do not invest 
in technology before we have something validated because it, that, that's in a way like a waste of resources. So There's no the money, but there is a lot of passion. A lot of passion. So the I first thing that we always do is we try always to understand and validate that there's that need and when we have all that and we are prepared to scale it is that when we start thinking on developing technology in order in a way to increase the experience and in a way to be able to scale it so we use we use this kind of optimization in different ways from the b2b b2c side basically what we are trying to help the users is we want to give you the right destinations that you're going to be willing to travel to because we know all that information based on the gathers of the type of destination you are willing to go, the type of content you are consuming, the type of content you are saving. So based on that and that information, our technology gives and recommends different destinations and different spots on the on, on their trip. On the other side, what we've seen is that when travel agents they are trying to acquire all that information because sometimes you have like a really basic PDF with all the information of the flights, activities, uh, uh, hotels. We are developing a technology so that only reading that PDF, everything is translated directly into the, the itinerary without any kind of effort. And on the other side, we get all that PDF and we translate all that information into a real itinerary. We geo, geo tag all the, the hotel, we geo tag because we know you can arrive on that airport, we geo tag that airport, we create all that different uh, routes in the most efficient way and we try to optimize that experience. So in a way we are not trying to uh, develop a new way of executing things. We are trying to improve ways that nowadays uh, the, those travelers are executing things, spending a lot of time, and in a way they are, they are assuming a worse experience to get a better result. So that's the way we are trying to execute through optimization and through technology to improve the experience, yeah. Great, great. Sounds easy, but uh, it, it's no, not. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. Not. We are not. trying to do it as quick as possible, but it takes time, yeah. Sure. Andreas, back, back to you. Uh, obviously, this serious potential to use uh, this kind of technologies, AI, uh, machine learning, as you were mentioning just a few minutes ago, it's it's also in another level, right? It's another league. You are playing, uh, performing in the Indeed. Champions League, right? Uh, but yeah, the challenge for you is, is also huge, right? So. Uh, you were starting to explain a little before what do you do on, on with all that technology, but if you can go uh, a little more in detail how you use all that technology. Right, so first of all we start with automation because still in our industry there is a lot of uh, manual tasks and 70% of the agents are spending time on something that can be automated. So first we need 70%. I'm a, I'm a data guy, a right? So that's why I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm 70%. Okay. Right. They spend 70% of their time doing something that can be automated. So there is a lot of efficiency gain and uh, cost reduction in there. So automation is like the foundation of this thing. When you start automating, then you can up level um, the the travel agent and become a travel consultant. So they have the time to share and customize the level of offerings to the customer. So they become travel consultants. Now, the important thing is to enable them to do that. So this is where technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning are uh, being deployed. So to give you an example, right now, if you end up in Barajas Airport and your connecting flight is uh, canceled, someone needs to go manually and find alternatives. If you need to stay overnight, find also hotel and then get back to you and uh, find a solution. What we can do with the latest technology combining Sabre and Google is to automate this process. So as soon as the system, not the agent, the system realizes that there is something wrong, they start creating alternatives. And based on the machine learning, we can prioritize the top three alternatives and present it to the agent. And then the agent will go back to the customer. If we take it a level forward, then this can go straight to the traveler, and the traveler can say yes or no, I prefer this or that, and get it done with AI bots and, and things like that. So this is where we are, everything very manual, and this is where we want to go. Everything automated and with recommendations. But this is not to replace the agent, it's to upskill Th and elevate the agent. I mean, travel agents are not really happy hearing that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's well, how They're not happy either right <laughs> now because um, the workload is getting higher. Every trip now is almost customized yeah. and they are not hiring more travel agents. 
Um, so there is a real lack of human yeah. capital right. and human resources in the industry. So with this kind of tools, we can automate uh, a lot of processes and then build on top and create value uh, thanks to technologies that are already available. But as um, we said, it's going to take some time to, yeah. to reach that uh, destination. Yeah. yeah. I, I personally think, because I'm really focused on that side also, we have to talk about it. Uh, the thing is that um, all that experience, they should be, those travel agents, they should be spending that time on trying to sell more, on trying to improve their products and creating more disruptive products, and not trying to spend all that time on executing repetitive, unrepetitive operations that they don't give an added value to the final client. Yeah. So, yeah, it's about, it's about giving automatization in the right way. Totally, yeah. Totally agree. O all of this sounds great, but how we make all of this profitable? I mean, uh, it feels like we have to say, to, to make every traveler believe that they are living a unique experience, but we can reinvent the wheel for every single client. So how, 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 you, how, you, how you deal with this, right? Uh, we, we need to make them feel like this, but we make obviously to have something uh, more standardized that then we can just flexibilize for, for every single client. But uh, how you deal with, with this? Uh, in, your, in your case, Daniel, which is pretty specific, right? Because uh, your social travelers uh, are traveling, uh, they want a unique experience, but they want to share that experience with other travelers that want to feel unique, so it's like putting together uh, two unique experiences that must be completely the same, right? H yeah. How do you deal with that? Maybe we, we play with the travel moods, for example. Uh, you can go to Thailand, but in a super different way if you go with the travel mood adventure, uh, nature, relax, or nightlife. So for the same trip, you have different moods of travel. Yes, that's, that's yeah, the, the same destination has different moods, uh, for example, dif different itineraries. Uh, but at, at least uh, the final customization of the trip, uh, as I said before, is, is in the WhatsApp uh, pre-trip, because uh, 21 days bef before the trip, the coordinator uh, opened a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group and each pack decide uh, how will be uh, their experience. So the coordinator offer uh, different experience, depends on the mood of the group, and they decide the final experience. So it's a question to down, um, down levels, uh, do, uh, do uh, small groups and then uh, a final customization. It's true that we use super manual uh, uh, human resources right, right now in it, but maybe it's our difference because at the end uh, we not only sell online, we, we do a lot of events where people want to put face to the people who want to travel uh, in our road. Mm -hmm. So at the end, this kind of uh, human resources is super important to do the final experience, at least the, the world experience. But that's a, a good example of using the, what, what it say, the omni-channel, isn't it? Yeah. So, so events is, are working perfectly for, for your segment, which makes a lot of sense because people want to socialize, yes. isn't it? Yes, it's like the pre-social and then the trip, and after the trip, you go back to the, to the event, so it's a, a real community base. That's, uh, so you're making community, so make, yes. make a lot, of, a lot of sense. Jordi, you you were mentioning uh, again. I'm a data guy. <laughs> fifty per fifty percent of people is looking for activities before deciding where to travel. So what can I do there? And then I look for my flight tickets, my hotel, whatever. Uh, in your case, you have also different kind of segmentations in terms of products. I mean, you 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 have to create one day tours, multi day tours. You have uh, destination services, yeah. uh, transfers. Uh, ho how you deal with all that, making this profitable? I mean, at the end, first of all, we need to understand that manual is good within a digital world. Um, we just need to make sure that that manual work adds value. Uh, because if we make the mistake of, uh, and this is going back to your uh, to your question, how to make it uh, profitable. If we made the mistake of trying to do everything digital, we go into a world that uh, uh, it does not make sense. It gets too complicated and, and we it's difficult to make money. Each company has their own value proposition. Each company has their brand proposal uh, to our clients. Uh, but we all have common ground in terms of how to digitalize our proposals finding the right balance between what do we digitalize and what do we do manual. This is the key on how to make it 
not only profitable from a financial point of view in the organization, but profitable for the client's point of view on finding the value that they're searching in our own uh, brands. Uh, so it is absolutely okay to digitalize a company where you will still maintain as part of your differentiation more manual, more human, but there are certain things that without a doubt everybody needs to digitalize because it's just a routine yeah. process that does not add any value to do it manually. So I think that the balance is always a good, good approach in terms of uh, how to address not only profitability but also sustainability in, in, in the future. Yeah, okay. technology is the enabler, not the end goal. And people buy from people and Jordi is very right on pointing out that uh, very strongly. Um, we're humans and we like human interaction. Yeah. The important thing is how we can maximize the impact of this interaction. Yeah, and, and traveling is about humans, totally. Uh, we are running out of time, but uh, we just wanted to let the, the last words to you, Andreas and, and Diego, uh, regarding that. Uh, uh, you, uh, in your case, Andreas, you have a really sophisticated marketplace in order to connect all this offer and demand, which is amazing. Um, how, how you can deal with that in order to, to make those numbers uh, fit? Well, first of all, there is a huge investment in R&D. We spent $1 billion per year in R&D. Secondly, <laughs> we have the strategy in place to make this happen because we have the data. Now we have modernized our platform to take advantage of the data. And secondly, uh, we have the uh, partnership with Google in order to utilize this technology. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The technology is there. We need to apply it in the specific um, uh, industry. And uh, the most important thing is that to enable our customers to take advantage of this investment. When they uh, work with Sabre, they take advantage of all this investment and solutions in order to make their uh, 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 customers successful and happy. So the key thing here is to maintain the investment in technology, but in a human way where you upscaling and up-leveling your customers. And that's create happy customers, attract new customers, but retain the existing ones. So this is the key strategy behind it. Thank you. Diego, just a few seconds, but the final words. Uh, um, in my, um, I have the impression that you are the, the unique that must to reinvent the wheel at every customer you have, right? Because they really uh, build their, their own trip, right? So that's reinventing. It, it's like this? It's true? Yeah, in a way, in a way, if you go into the community, you can find like already made itineraries by third parties or by destinations that they have already created their own itineraries based on the strategies for the marketing promotion that they are trying to, to boost. But uh, yeah, we are really focused on trying to give that real tool for those users so that when they go inside into that itinerary, they have all the ecosystem that they want. They want a book, they can book it. They, they want to have all that network, they want to invite their friends, they can bring all their friends. If they want to start analyzing together and making decisions, they can do it there inside. You see a lot of users using uh, the, the itineraries of other users? Of other users, yeah, of course. They go into different itineraries. In this case, we have a, a large community. In this community, we have like travel leaders, influencers, travel bloggers, that they have millions of audiences and followers trying to gather information on what's going to be they're going to be doing on that destination and our tool basically we are trying to make uh, uh, all that trip and all that customer journey much simpler so um, through that technology totally uh, aligned with that side is that we we are not trying to develop all that sh all that technology by our side we work and we work directly with IA and with o OCR technologies with Google uh, and we try to integrate and validate that all that need is a real need by, by the customer. No? We are always thinking on the customer and everything that decisions that we take are based on the customer. So if that in a way afterwards is shown out in organic growth, is shown out in retention, that means that we are going the right path. Totally, thank you. Well, thank you all. We are we're fishy, finishing here. Uh, I wish we had, had we had time for questions, but we will be uh, around. So if you have any inquiry, any questions, just feel free to approach us. And thank you, thank you all for the insightful session, and thank you for coming. Thank you.